Good morning. I'm welcoming you all who are here today, either in the sanctuary or the fellowship hall or at home on YouTube. And I have prayed that all of you will have a meaningful encounter with God today. I'm sure that you've all noticed that I am not Pastor Gary Weaver. He was scheduled to be with us today, but he called me last night about 7.30 to tell me he has COVID. So, many things in your bulletins are not applicable. (laughs) This is a go with the flow day, and in the theme of my sermon, we have maybe come to dance the waltz, but today we're doing square dancing, Mike. Before I say our prayers, I wanted to acknowledge that we've had a pretty rough week here at the church. Um, our financial secretary, Pam Johnson, who has been was with us for many, many years, had a major heart attack and ended up dying this week. And our financial secretary that we have now, Karen, his mother had a uh, heart issue, or not a heart issue, a brain bleed, and so she went to Wisconsin, and her mother died also. So it has been a hard week. Tom picked a great week to be on vacation, but we'll make it through. Just keep, um, especially Pam's family, in your prayers. Her mom, Darlene Madsen, is an um, active member of this church. Let us pray. Jesus said, I am. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And in me you will find rest for your souls. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. With righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord. As the waters cover the sea, his resting place shall be glorious. Would you please stand and sing along with us? We had Easter a week or so ago, so let's sing some of those songs.
would you please pray with us? Holy God, we come into this sanctuary many times seeking refuge, but most of all today seeking peace and hope. God, we come with so many things. Some of us are really, really deep in grief that just won't seem to let us go. God, some of us are riding high, and we praise you for that because we know we'll come there. You will be there. You will meet us wherever we're at. In the depths of the depths or in the highest mountain, you are there. You are a God we worship, we adore. Father, thank you for being here. Thank you for wrapping your arms around us and comforting us. Thank you for being our hope in times of so much darkness. God, we worship you. We adore you. We bring those things to you that just hold so tightly onto us. Sometimes guilt just won't let us go, God. So we bring that to you, anything that we need to let go of today, things that we're holding so tightly onto that may not even serve us. Very, they just don't serve us right now. And we can let those go, and we know that you wash us, and you pick us up and set us on your feet. Say, let's go, child. We've got work to do. So thank you, God. Thank you for this place. Thank you that we can come and lay out all that we have, our joys, our sorrows, our concerns, our hopes, and our belief that you are the God that rose from the dead, and you are here with us, and you will come and get us again. Thank you, Jesus, in your holy name. Amen.
Good morning. Just so that you, the screen is correct, your bulletin has been changed. So we're a different scripture reading this morning. So this is from Paul, Palms, Psalms 149, verses 1 through 5. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the assembly of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing and make to him with tambourine and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He, come, he crowns the humble with salvation. Let the saints rejoice in his honor and sing for joy on their beds. This is the word of the Lord. Can the kids come forward, please? Stand this way and face me. We're going to have a meeting of the first drama club of First Presbyterian Church. Okay? So all of you stand up and face me. All right. I didn't get the memo about the scripture changing. So, sorry. I'm on the last scripture, and the last scripture was 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 13, which is all about love. Okay, so today we are going to make a play with that scripture. So we are lucky. God has given us some gifts, and the first gift God gave us was, if I can get this paper off, can you turn around and show that? Faith. And on the back, it has what Google says is the definition of faith. Complete trust in God. Okay, now if you believe everything Google says, <laughs> that's the, the faith, definition of faith. Okay. The next gift he gave us is hope. And Google's definition of hope is a wish to soar. soar on wings like eagles. She can't read my writing. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> and just hold that up for a minute and we'll say the definition. And then I need you to start because then if you will turn around, the last gift that is talked about in this scripture is put your arm like that. Like that. It's it's good. It's good. That's an L. Buddy, can you stand here and put your arms up? What's that? That's an O. Can you come here and stand up and put your arms up and make a V? <clears throat> make a V. Oh, there you go. Perfect. And you come over here and you are going to need a little help with your E. Can you make a C? And you put a, you put the C, make a C with your arms. All right, now you put the knitting needle in the middle so it becomes an E. Okay? So here we have it. Perfect. Perfect. So he gave us faith, hope, and, right? Okay, and here is Google's definition of love. Selfless, sacrificial, and unconditional. Agape is another word for love. 
We are blessed by these gifts. <clears throat> the love comes from God to us, and then we give that love to others. What a blessing. Now, turn around, all of you. Put your papers down. And we're going we're gonna to next make a heart. Okay? When I say the greatest gift is love, you're going to want to turn around and make a heart. Okay? All right. So, the Bible verse says that the greatest gift that he gave us is love. And now you may clap for the drama club. <laughs> they are going to introduce themselves. I'm Taylor. I'm Brooke. Aiden. Ethan. Buddy. Pass, pass it. Pass it. Alex. Zach. Just say your name. Danny. And now. As to a drama or a play, what comes at the end? Bow. Bow. Now you may clap. Thank you. Let us pray. Lord, we are so excited that you have given us these three gifts, faith, hope, and love. We love the love that God is giving to us, and in that, we want to project that from us to you. We love you. We feel God's love and want to spread it out in the world so that love is the dominant theme. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Drama Club. Thanks, Bobby. You might become our director. <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come today to be in community, a community of love, and a community whose hearts are broken and sad because we have loved people that are gone. We ask that you wrap your arms of hope around the families that are hurting so much. And may this message help us heal some of the sorrow that we have today. Amen. Charles Dickens begins his classic novel, A Tale of Two Cities, with these words. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times, it was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness, it was the epic of belief, it was the epic of doubt, it was the season of lights, it was the season of despair, of oh, darkness, sorry, it was the spring of hope and it was the winter of despair. These famous words describing a time very long ago seem appropriate for the times that we are in today. Dickens begins this tale with a vision that human prosperity cannot be matched with human despair. He also tells of a time of despair and suffering on one hand, joy and hope on another. An apt phrase to be used in the context of today's world when on the one hand, the rich enjoy luxury, while on the other, the poor are struggling, and for every day, for their housing, their food, and even their health care. The contrasts are ageless, unfortunately. And in this age of foolishness, of skepticism and unbelief, of darkness and despair, people of faith honestly ask, where is God? Where is God in this messy time of injustice and horrific deaths, riots, inequality, and war? Where are you, God? 
And what would you have your people do? This morning, we're going to explore the idea that God is right here in the midst of all of this, just as he was with the Israelites in the desert of Sinai. His hand is here, reaching out to us and asking us to dance with him. Years ago, my mentor for the Commission Pastor Program, Sid Skirvin, shared with me a figure he had of three persons dancing in a circle, holding hands. It was a pretty primitive piece, little detail, gray in color. But Sid said this piece of art reminded him of the Holy Trinity, dancing. He shared his belief that the three persons of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, dance with each other in pure love and joy. I must tell you, at that point in my life, this was an eye-opener for me. A new concept, a new way to envision the Trinity. And I really liked it. This is love on the move, interacting joyful love. This is dynamic God love. Richard Rohr says in his book, The Divine Dance, to try to understand the Trinitarian relationship. Whatever is going on in God is a flow, a radical relatedness, a perfect communion between the three, a circle dance of love. And God is not just a dancer. God is the dance of love. It's a round dance, an infinite current, current of love streams without ceasing, to and fro, to and fro, gliding from one to the other. And all of us are invited to join them in that dance. Our time with God is our time to dance, a time of prayerful interaction with the God who so desires us, the personal God of love and grace who seeks each one of us to be a partner, a God who asks, Shall we dance? Nietzsche said he could only believe in a God who would dance. The God I know is not one who stands away from us, he says. Nope, my God, our God, is one who seeks relationships in an ongoing dance. Christian author Robert Benson writes, if we are to live lives that enable us to hear more clearly who we really are, then we will have to learn to move to a rhythm that is superior to the ones we have fashioned for ourselves or the ones a consumer society has foisted upon us. We will have to discover the rhythms of prayer and life that can be found in the steps of the dances of the Ancient of Days which are the liturgy, the Eucharist, the liturgical calendar, a worship service, and prayers of confession and intercession. We will have to discover the habits of reading scriptures and books that enlighten our understanding of God. We will need to practice hospitality and forgiveness and being with the poor. Our lives must be shaped by the same rhythms that shape those who have lived the Christian life before us. Only then will, be, will we be able to take our places and join the dance. Living a life with God, dancing with God, comes when we listen, when we engage in a life with God, when we pray. It's our heart's response to the rhythm of God's heart. Like the way one's feet start tapping when someone plays a country tune, you simply cannot stop tapping your foot, even if you try. A piece of advice, if you don't want to tap your foot, stay away from the music. If you don't want to pray, then don't go near pray books or your Bible. But once your heart has heard that music, it is happy only when it is dancing. Marjorie Suhaki, in her book of God's Presence, 
gives the reader an image of dancing with God as an image of prayer. She says, prayer is our openness to God, and prayer is God's openness to us. In this, prayer is not only for our sakes, but it's also for God's. This is a two-way relationship. God's gracious command to pray suggests the possibility that our prayers do make a difference to God. God seeks us, seeks an interaction with us. God wants intimacy and invites us to dance. Prayer is like a dance, whereby in every moment of existence, God touches the world with guidance toward a communal good. God gives to the world and receives from the world, and the world gives to God and receives from God again and again. It is the dance. And we can ask, where is God leading me? What steps will he teach me? God invites us to daily dance with him. Psalm 149 reminds us, For the Lord takes delight in his people and crowns them with salvation. The delight of the Lord guarantees forgiveness and blessing and restoration, renewed relationships with him. And God's people's reaction can only be joy, joy in all circumstances. When the Lord takes delight in the people, we are fully assured that all the benefits of the covenants and his promises will be fulfilled. And we can celebrate God's companionship with each of us, partners in prayer. I want to read a story from this book. I've read this to you all before, but none of you will remember it, I'm sure. (laughs) But it's one of my favorites. Before meeting the disciples on the boat, Jesus is alone on the mountain. He walks down slowly, grinning, after listening to affectionate words from his father and soaking up the stillness after a day crowded with people and noise. His eyes sparkle as God stirs the wind and sprinkles refreshing drops of rain onto his face through the evergreen boughs. Jesus probably loves walking on the water the way I love walking on the beach in a storm. The fury of the wind and the water careen ecstatically about. But he doesn't feel scared, just exhilarated by nature swirling through the air and at his feet. He is dancing in the waves while the disciples cower in fear. And Peter senses this wild peace as Jesus approaches. Now, don't be afraid, Jesus laughs as he sees the stricken faces and hears a barely audible whisper. It's a ghost from the quaking boat. It's only me, he says. Peter, scared as the rest, but intrigued by the peace in the voice, stutters through fear. Jesus, if it's really you, ask me to dance on the water. Come, dance with me, answers Jesus. So Peter steps off the boat onto the whirling, raging dance floor. He looks into Jesus' eyes, letting him lead the first steps on the water. And for a few miraculous moments... They dance. Amazed at the wildness of the dance, Peter looks away just as the sea and the sky and the fish dance more fiercely to welcome him to revelry. Fear grips him as he begins to sink, realizing his feet are anchored on nothing but mystery, moving to a rhythm he doesn't yet understand. Though nature seems to know the same song that coursed through him in the beginning, which frightens and excites him all the more. Lord, save me, he cries, and looks up to find the playful eyes of the one he has come to love, but not understand. Why did you doubt? Jesus smiles as he reaches down for Peter's frigid hand and pulls him gently into the boat. We could have danced all night. 
The storm slows its dance to the rhythm of waves lapping a lullaby against the small boat. Disciples look in awe on the peaceful, smiling one and their friend who is beginning to never recover from the taste of the dance. Truly, you are the Son of God, they muttered. No one else could dance like that. God takes delight in us and always calls us to have relationship with him in all circumstances of our life. When you're invited, when God extends his hand to you, God says, shall we? And I hope each one of you says, yes. Amen. I need communion servers. I have no idea who's doing this today. <laughs> so, anybody that is ordained as an elder or deacon can come help serve. Um, trade places. Okay, wait a minute. We only need two, four. I think that's enough. You may have. Dave, maybe you should go pray. Okay. We're okay? We're in. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe. You made us in your image, setting us in your world of love to serve you and to live in peace with your whole creation. Out of your great love for the world, you sent your only Son among us to redeem us and to be the way to eternal life. Jesus said, Come to me, all of you that are weary and carrying a heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never thirst for righteousness. You commanded the light to shine out of the darkness, divided the sea and dry land, created the vast universe, and called it good. You made us in your image to live with one another in love, you gave us the breath of life and freedom to choose your way. You promised yourself in covenant with Abraham and Sarah, told us your purpose and commandments through Moses, and called for justice in the cry of the prophets. Through long generations, you have been faithful and kind to all your children. Hear the words of the institution of the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ. We give you thanks that the Lord Jesus on the night before he died took bread and after giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples as I ministering in his name, give it to you. This. Jesus said, my body is broken for you. Do this in remembering me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, the cup of salvation, which has been shed with my blood, my blood sealed with my blood for the forgiveness of sins. 
Whenever you drink from this cup and eat this bread, remember the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so directions. <laughs> to, see, to receive bread, you're going to come down the middle aisle, then go off to the sides for the cup. We will have Stephen ministers on the sides if you want to ask for prayer, share a prayer, give them a hug. They'll give you one back. <laughs> if you have, um, I was going to say if you have any prayers, but we already did that. All right. We need to trade places so you guys can come back. Or maybe you can come around there. Would that be better?
still chewing. <laughs> and now with gratitude for God's blessings, through the power at work in Christ Jesus, we gather now the gifts of this church for the sustenance and outreach to our community. announcements. <clears throat> the funeral for Pam is tentatively scheduled for Tuesday. We don't know the time yet, so watch for emails. And in that same note, the bereavement ladies need to meet in the kitchen, which is their hangout, right after this service. Okay? What? Oh, yeah. Vivaldi next Sunday, right, Jay? That is going to be amazing. They've been practicing all the time. Every time I turn around, they're Shay practicing. So plan on that. I think that's in the bulletin. So plan on coming to that.
Let us pray. Author of all mercy, we give you thanks for your goodness and your loving kindness to us and to all that you have made. We praise you for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by your Son, Jesus. Today we bow our heads in sorrow for the escalating war in Gaza. O oh Lord, save your people. Give wisdom and mercy to the leaders of the nations instead of greed and hate. Plant a vision of common good to which all nations might aspire. Open their eyes to see the individual victims instead of their enemies. For all those who are in need, those who are in prison, those facing surgery, all who lack medical help, those who have no work, the homeless and unhoused in our community, those who are ill, and those of us who are mourning. And again, we pray for the families who've lost loved ones in the last few days, for Karen Craig, who lost her mother, and for our dear Darlene Matson and her family, who lost their daughter and sister Pam. We entrust them to your never-failing love. Hold them in your eternal hands, and we are hoping that they are dancing with you in joy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting that for these and for us, your care is constant and your heart is open. Through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. And now may the Lord Jesus Christ live in your hearts, and sing in your souls. And may you dance with him now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs> Would you please stand with us and sing a final song? And if you have to be someplace at the moment, you can certainly be on your way. We will sing you out the door. I know. 